disguised quadratic equations. A typical quadratic equation is like x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. In this equation, if we just have a look at the x and the x squared here, can you see that to go from one to the other you have to square and you may find the same thing to be true with equations which are not quadratic but which are described as being disguised quadratic equations so for instance let's say if you had 2 v to the power of 6 plus v to the power of 3 minus 10 is equal to 0. Let's say you were trying to solve this equation. So you look at this term here, that's v to the power of 3, and that's v to the power of 6. Ignore any coefficients in front, like that minus 5 there, that 2 there, just ignore those. And if it appears as though you square the term here to get the term there, then this is a disguised quadratic and a disguised quadratic can be rewritten so if we just focus on the example so I could rewrite this as 2 a to the power of 2 plus a minus 10 is equal to 0 and you can see some similarities between these equations and what I've, what I've done here is I've used the substitution a is equal to v cubed. I've used this. a is equal to v cubed. Squaring both sides will give a squared is equal to v to the power of 6. If you square v cubed, you're multiplying it by itself. So if you add the indices, you get 6. And v to the power of 6, you can see here, which is a squared. So I could go on to solve this standard quadratic equation and then undo the substitution by using this at the end. Because this equation is in terms of v, the final solution must be in terms of v. You can't have your final answer as a is equal to something, it must be v is equal to something. Disguised quadratic equations. Okay, we have this equation and to see if it's a disguised quadratic I'm going to use the same method as before. Just take these terms, ignore any coefficients and does it appear as though if you square the term on the right you get the one on the left? You start with t squared, you square that, you get t to the power of 4. It does, which means we can write this as a disguised quadrat. So I can write this as v squared. It doesn't really matter what letter you're using here, as long as it's different to this one. Minus 13v plus 36 is equal to 0. So the substitution that I've used here, I've replaced the t with v and v is equal to t squared. So v squared will be t to the power of 4, as you have here. So this quadratic equation easily factorizes, and from this factor here, we have v minus 9 equals 0, so v is equal to 9, and from this one here, we have v minus 4 is equal to 0, so v is equal to 4. Now the original equation is in terms of t and not v. So we have to undo this substitution. And to undo the substitution, I'm going to replace v with t squared. So I'm going to replace the v with t squared. And replacing this v with t squared. Now because these are equations, when you square root both sides, 
you get plus or minus. You get two solutions. Square rooting both sides, you get plus or minus. So there you have it. We started with an equation here, which is clearly not a quadratic equation. We have recognized that this term here squared will give you this term here. So this is a disguised quadratic. We've used the substitution v is equal to t squared to write the equation in terms of v, factorized, solved in terms of v, and then we undo the substitution, replacing the v with t squared, replacing that v with t squared. Nothing happens to the 9 or the 4, and then solving last step of square rooted both sides. So we have four solutions, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2. Next example, root x is equal to 6 minus x. Now this does not even look like a, qu um, uh, a disguised quadratic. But let's persevere, let's see what happens here. First of all, take all your terms to one side. So make the whole thing equal to 0. And using the index form, so that's x to the power of 1, root x is just x to the power of a half. And then have a look at these terms. If you take x to the power of a half, and if you square it, does it give you x to the power of 1? It does. Squaring the x to the power of a half term involves doing x to the power of a half times x to the power of a half. And if you add the indices, a half plus a half is 1, which is what we've got here. Okay, I'm going to use a substitution to write this as a quadratic equation. So v squared plus v minus 6 equals 0. Factorizing solutions in terms of v. Now we need to go back to x, which is what the original equation is in terms of. So v, my substitution, is equal to x to the power of a half or the square root of x. So I'm going to replace the v here with root x and the v here with root x. So these solutions now become these in terms of x and x to the power of a half is just the square root of x. On the right hand side here are you going to square root something to get a negative number? It's not going to happen so we need to discard the solution there. On the left hand side, if we square both sides, we get x is equal to 4. So there's only one solution this time. Okay, so remember this that x equals 4 is the only solution that we've got for this equation. Now I'm going to show you a different method for solving this equation. And just remember that there's only one solution here. Okay, so the same equation. I'm going to square both sides. Expanding brackets. Taking all the terms to one side. Factorizing solutions. Do you notice there are two solutions here? And before, there was only one solution. So where has this extra solution appeared from? To explain this extra solution, I'm going to show you a slightly different um, uh, problem here. Let's say that k is equal to 4. So k only has one value. And then I square k. So 4 squared is 16. OK, we have an equation here. So I can square root both sides. So if I square root both sides, the left hand side becomes k again, but on the right hand side I've got plus or minus 4. And you get a plus or a minus because you're solving an equation. Okay. 4 and minus 4 are both solutions to this equation, so this seems, um, uh, it seems correct. Except we know 
that in the beginning k was only equal to 4. So we've ended up with these solutions, but where did this one come from? What this shows is if you square both sides of an equation, you've potentially introduced some solutions that didn't exist to begin with. So if you have used a method where you've squared both sides of an equation and you've got some solutions, you should test them in the original equation that you started with. So if I put in k equals 4 into here, so 4 equals 4, that one works. If I put k is equal to minus 4 right here, minus 4 equals 4, it doesn't. That doesn't work. So coming back to this, by squaring both sides, we've introduced an extra solution which was not there to begin with. Okay, so this 9, we need to um, uh, discard it. If you put 9 into the equation here, just to show you that it doesn't work, you've got the square root of x, so if I do this, square root of 9 is equal to 6 minus x. x is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 6 take away 9 gives you minus 3. It doesn't work. OK, next example. Again, if you look at the terms here, ignore the coefficients. x to the power of a third, if I square this, I will get x to the power of two thirds, so this is a disguised quadratic. Here's my um, quadratic equation, factorising solutions. And we know that v here was x to the power of a third, v was x to the power of a third. So replacing the v here and here with x to the power of a third, I've got this. Cubing both sides gives minus 64 and 1. So we have two solutions to the original equation. And our solutions are in terms of x, as was the original equation. If you work everything out up to here, and then you stop because you forget to undo the substitution, then expect to lose a number of marks.